They have something important to share. And after they get through uh, taking turns, we're going to start from the youngest to the oldest. Um, I'd like to give all of you an opportunity to ask them questions. And I hope that you can think of questions as they're talking so that we can uh, get a little bit more information from these CF experts. So I'm going to start and um, I'll just introduce these guys with first names. This is Zach. Zach is 11, 12. 12 years old, Sydney, 11, Sydney, oh, I thought it was, you should have been over here, that's all right, Marlene, and Marlene's 16, 17, I'm well, one year behind with everybody so far, Matt, and Julie, <laughs> it's Julie and Matt, so um, go ahead, Zach, if you want to start, you can just sit and be comfortable and, you know, Read from your cards if you want to. Hi, my name is Zachary Smith. I'm 12 years old, 12 years old from Virginia. I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis when I was 7 months old. First time I realized I had CF is when I was in first grade because nobody else had to. Because I had to take medication before I ate. Nobody else had to, so it made me feel a little different. It bothered me because other kids had to wait for me before they ate. I didn't think that was fair. All, at that point, I knew I was sent to see ya, but really didn't understand how serious, how serious it was until I did a make wish at the age of F seven. My wish was to go to the Yankees game at Yankee Stadium. It was awesome. I met Joe Torrey, Johnny Davis, A. Rock, Derek Beaver, and many others, and I had the pictures to prove them. We also went to the Empire State Building. Marlene, before you get started, I just want to make a quick announcement. Um, we're still missing five of those clickers, and Hannah was trying to go around to get them all, so there's a couple over there, Hannah, so we can return them. All right, sorry. Go ahead, Marlene. Thank you. 
remember that it could be a lot worse and like as life goes on, like it's just something I have to deal with. Um, I don't know, I've, I've been very healthy myself, mostly because of my dad, because he makes me do my treatments when I don't want to. But he always helped me out. And I was diagnosed when I was three months old, so I don't really remember what it was like back then. But um, once I got to school and stuff and started taking my pills before I ate, like he said, I like, realized I was different than everybody else, but that wasn't a bad thing. A lot of my friends are really supportive, and they'll sit there and look at me while I do my treatment to make sure it gets done. And, I don't know, it's kind of a struggle with like high school and stuff because it starts earlier. And I get on the bus at 6.50 in the morning, but I do my inhaler when I come home and before I go to bed. So it's really not that bad. I can do my homework while I do it, so. Um, yeah, I should have wrote a script or something. <laughs> That's all I have to say right now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mom. And uh, 
I mean, everything I learned in college, I just, you know, I got in a routine. Um, I actually had my parents wash out my setup for me when I was in school, and then I would just pick them up whenever I was going home. Because I actually uh, skipped. I, I got lazy, I didn't wash out my setups, and I actually got a micro bacteria. And I was sick for about a year, and it didn't look good for a while. So uh, definitely make sure that you clean out your setups. And it's OK for the parents to help out with your day-to-day -day tasks to help you get through. And now I'm, I'm done with school. I have a job now, and I'm just getting ready to move out of my apartment, or out of my house to my own apartment, and taking over all the aspects of, of my CF, and I'm 26. So I'm 20, I just turned 26, and I'm just getting all my stuff together in CF. So that's pretty much it. Oh, it's good. Um, my name is Julie Hack. I'm 44. I was diagnosed when I was two. And I was thinking this week what I would talk to you about because I've, I've spoken to a lot of you about <coughs> growing up with CF, about going to college, not taking care of myself necessarily all the time. <clears throat> I've spoken about um, adherence because I have a crazy career that sometimes takes over. Um, I've spoken to you, <coughs> excuse me, about about being married, about, about I have two children, um, my children, about conceiving my children. So whatever questions you want, I'm happy to talk about those things that, that I've spoken about before. But I was thinking, I think that I'm going to talk to them about this sort of strange place I'm at um, in my life. Because, I mean, look at the panel. I'm the oldest one here. Not that I'm you know, necessarily an old person, and not that I'm old to have CF, but I'm in sort of a strange place. In my life right now, my husband um, always says to me, this is his question, how do you think you feel now compared to 10 years ago? And but he's been asking me this for 15 years, so you know, you know, he's been asking me longer than that 10 that 10 year period, but that, that's so hard for me to judge. How do I feel now compared to 10 years ago? Because I think I, sometimes I think that your health is like um, you're like getting wrinkles, like you don't notice that it's coming and you don't see that it's, you just look in the mirror one day and go, oh, that's on my forehead, right? You know, like, when did, when did that come from? So I can't tell. I mean, I feel like I get up in the morning and I feel like I feel great, but, you know, if I were in a time machine and I were back 10 years, do I feel different than I felt 10 years ago? My children are 8 and 11, so... This is what I notice with my children because they're young and they're active and they want me to go out in the backyard and play baseball and run bases and uh, take a nappy, you know, after school. So um, my, my family has always liked to hike. And um, we were hiking last week in Saranac, this little mountain called, called Baker Mountain. And um, I still hike with that. And this is something I know this is different over the last 10 years. But I am just like the, the pokiest hiker, but really I mean, it's uphill for an hour, right? So I'm the quirkiest hiker. They're all up there, and then I'm all back here. And then they like they take their turns. My husband will come back and walk with me for a little while, and then he's got his gist, which is like, great, great, honey, nobody cares that you're really hungry, everyone else will. And then my son will come back, and then he has his little speech. He has to put his arm around me like I'm extremely geriatric, and walks up the mountain with me like that. And then my daughter has her thing. She'll come back and she'll walk with me, but she's still a couple of feet in front of me. And she's saying things like, come on, honey, I'm running up this hill. I'm hopping. You can't walk. I'm hopping. How come I can hop and you can't walk? You know, so that's my daughter's, you know, pep talk, I guess. Or she'll say, look, Bolton up there is way ahead of you. He's older than you. So that's my daughter's idea. Pushing me up the mountain. So. But I do, I do see things um, that are different like that. And I think about other moms who are 44. Are they creeping up the mountain, you know, behind their family? And, and part of the bittersweet part of that is I'm still walking up the mountain. You know, I, I've been see after 44 years. And I think about, you know, what I've done to my mind in the last 44 years. And I'm still, I'm still able to walk up the mountain. I'm still able to spend the rest of them. Um, you know, my kids are at a point where they, they're starting to ask me more questions. And, um, you know, my kids are, 
they realize that not all mommies get pipelines, and um, they know that, that there's you know, something different about their mommy, and they don't, they don't quite know the whole story. And I just think we live the Dr. Spock books. You don't have a chapter on how do you talk to your children about, about your health when your health is compromised. And so <clears throat> I know that conversation will come in my son is 11, and, and he's curious and that um, I'm going to have to have that conversation with him. And I just think it's an interesting thing for you to think about those of you kids that, those of you who are, who are parents to, to children in CF who want your children to have children. I'm going to give all of you a couple minutes to think of some questions for these guys, but I'm going to take the first shot just to break the ice here. And Julie, I'm going to start with you. Because um, that's all I ever do is ask questions every day anyway. <laughs> um, you talk about change over time, and I know from my experience of working with young and old people with CF that there are changes that happen, whether it be the diagnosis of another illness in addition to CF, like cystic fibrosis related diabetes, or getting to a point where you're going into the hospital for IVs for the first time, or going into the hospital more often every year, or having to see the doctors more often. How do you deal with those adjustments? Because I'm sure there's some emotional up and down. So what type of coping strategies do you use to get you through those moments? horrible news my parents received, you know, when I was two and I was diagnosed. I just, I just, I think about it, because now that I'm a parent, I think, oh, I don't know that I can take that news, but, you know, I, my parents, of course, you know, always made me understand that I had to do that, you know, all I could in order to, to stay healthy, and again, I would, I wouldn't sit here and lie to you and say that every do, every day, I do every treatment, I have to force myself, I have to trick myself, I have to promise myself shopping sprees, you know, I mean, I really do have to, like, mess with myself to get everything done, because I do like to tell what it is to get everything done. That is really healthy as, um, as, a, as a, a young person, and I never went in the hospital until I was 24 years old, and I can remember that experience, I can remember, you know, whoever, I can remember, you know, at the time, saying that I had to go in for this, you know, I mean, it wasn't the end. It was 20 years ago, and it was still here. It wasn't the end at all. Um, it was just, okay, now we moved into um, I'm taking another, another level of care. And I've taken every one of those, those challenges that have come along, I just sort of enveloped them into the life. I mean, the treatments and the best, and the, you know, the nebulizer, it really it becomes part of your everyday
before. I'm so lucky I have my husband. You know, I'm lucky I have a good time. There is one thing that I wanted to hope you would elaborate on. There was something that I'm aware of that you're, you and your family started doing together a couple of years ago that revolves around. Jim? Yes. Oh my God, I told you exactly for Adam It's funny because I don't know if I'll just keep that all going to but I used to say, oh yeah, I run, I run out to my car, I run to Starbucks. You know, I mean, it's such snot about the fact that I didn't exercise. You know, it was kind of a joke about it. And then um, my mother passed away, um, really from complications of diabetes, because you know, she didn't take care of herself, and then she showed up, and we all kind of looked at that, like, oh my gosh, let's not let that happen. And, you know, I was in my, I was in my late 30s when my mother passed away. It was the most horrific thing that ever happened to me, and I just thought, oh, I can't let something like that happen to my kids. You know, I better get in gear and, and, um, and you know, do the things I need to do. So we really freaked out. We were all the chips and soda and you know, we're crazy about eating healthy and living healthy. I've been a vegetarian for 22 years and I don't know what that is. But see, yeah, but already I had a pretty healthy, you know, eating habits. But, so we decided, okay, we're going to join the gym. And this, I mean, I, we can't live without it. We love it. The gym is just, we love the gym. My husband goes constantly. He's a triathlete now, he runs, he swims, he does everything. And our children are so little when my mother passed away that I feel like they've always been raised in a house where the gym and exercise was, was really important. I mean, I wasn't there this morning because I was in the softball field with my daughter. So um, they, you know, they play one sport per season and they're, they're at the gym, they run the track. And it's just such a, it's such a great, it's just a great, healthy, Your life, you can have that part of your lifestyle, but I would miss it so much now. It, it, it really becomes easy, but I know you mentioned that too. It really does become, it, it's not a chore. You miss it, don't you? Anybody out there have a question? Go ahead, Grace, yell. Get scared? Not really, but like I pretty much like the doctors tell me I'm like one in a million kids who like isn't as sick as a normal CF patient. So like right now I'm not scared that I won't be here soon. So I think like, I'll be here for a long time and I'll live keep the life of a person without CF. How about you, Sydney? Um yeah, there's definitely times where it gets really scary where you think Oh my gosh, you know, what if tomorrow, you know, it all ends. But if you don't think of things like that, then it's not scary because, um, like, I think about everyone else here, um, I've also been very healthy and fortunate that I've been very healthy throughout um, my long years of being on the earth. Um, I've been very healthy. Um, I do have time 
<clears throat> Matt, go ahead. Yeah, uh, there's definitely been times where, where I've been scared. I also, um, I consider myself to be pretty healthy, but, uh, you know, when I went, when I went to, <clears throat> to college and I wasn't washing out my setups the way that I was supposed to be, I, I caught a pretty nasty bug. And uh, my lung function actually got cut in half, and they didn't know what was, what was wrong with me for a while. And it was about an eight month process where things were like pretty bad. And I didn't know what was going to happen. My parents didn't know what was going to happen. I thought that it was my CF and that, you know, my quality of life wasn't going to be going uh, well. It was to the point where I would walk up the hill to class and I couldn't even make it up the hill because I couldn't breathe. And I was just really, I didn't know what was going to happen. It was really scary. But um, luckily, we found out that it was a mycobacteria, and uh, my lung function is back up to where it was before. So I'm very fortunate of that. But it just goes to show, don't ever take anything for granted, because you never know what's around the corner. You might be healthy one second, and you know one bad thing, and you, know, you don't know. So that's why it's very important to make sure that even if you are healthy and you think that you're untouchable, just always take the extra step. Do your treatments. Uh, eat well. Uh, you know, there's going to be times where you feel lazy and you're going to miss the treatment. You know, I've done it too. That's fine, but just, just always uh, try your best and don't take anything for, for granted. If there's anything that I, that I can tell you guys, it's, it's that. And, you know, I make sure now that I, I do my uh, my setups are always washed. Uh, also, one time when I was younger, I I flushed my pillows down the toilet because I, I didn't want to take them, and I was healthy. I was like, I don't need this, so I flushed it down. And then you know what what happens? I I got sick. So uh, and the one time that I got the mycobacteria, I actually had to go to the hospital too, and uh, so I, I had my first pick line, and that was that was scary. I, I always thought that I was uncomfortable. Or I, was, or I was like, oh yeah, I have a really mild case, but you know what, a mild case or not, it's still a CF, it's still with you, and you have to make sure that you really, you know, take it, take it seriously. And so, that's all. That's good. Molly, would you want to add to that? Matt, let me repeat the question in case people in the back didn't hear it. The question was, if, to Matt, if you were the parent of these younger people with CF, what would you do to assure that they do their treatments and they take it seriously and they work hard on a day-to-day -day basis to keep themselves healthy? That's a good question. 
question. Uh, actually, that's pretty funny. If my parents uh, <coughs> met them, it was be like, wow, these are the most cool protective parents ever. Like, I felt like if I wanted to go, if I was to go to college, if, 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 it, if it was then bringing me to college, I would have been in a bubble, like on the outside of the So, uh, but with that said, um, I think it's important just to have a plan of attack. I think that there's so much to college is a whole other world. And it's, it's really all about balance. And I know people say that all the time, but you have all the distractions in the, in the dorm. You have all your work that has to get done. You have part, parties, little kids here uh, <laughs> Yeah, parties where you drink a lot of soda. Uh, <laughs> so there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot to balance out. Um, so I think it's important to figure out, okay, are you going to get a pill box? You didn't have the pill box before. Are you going to do that? Um, you know, are you going to speak with somebody? Like maybe if you never saw a therapist, are you going to talk to somebody in school? I, I found that to be helpful for me, you know, because you need to talk to somebody about it. If you were shy, um, are you going to live in a single? Are you going to tell people why you're in a single? I lied about it. I said, oh yeah, I just got lucky. And they were like, oh, that's pretty cool. But I had a single because they didn't want me to live with other people. And actually, when I, so one of the schools that I was really thinking about going to, uh, which I actually later went for grad school, uh, was UMass Amherst. They actually told me that I wouldn't be able to live in the dorm. They said, yeah, we have a policy to see have patients who can't live in the dorm. And I, I was really offended by that. And my parents were really upset. And, uh, and, uh, and I, I think that they just didn't understand that there's a lot of different layers of CS. And I actually ended up going to Portland. And uh, living in the dorm was, was fine. But I, I think if, you're, if you are a parent, you know, I know that you're going to want to tell them, like, this is what you have to do. This is what I think you should do. I think that that's, that's good to do. I, I would definitely encourage that. But also know that if you keep telling them to do that, they're going to do it. And they're going to do the opposite. Because I know I did that. They were like, you need to tell people that you have it. You need to be more outgoing with it. But at that time, I just wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready. And I don't know if there's anything that I could have done differently to make that happen. I think that that's just how I, I did it. And I, if I could do it over again, I wouldn't do it that way. Um, but I would definitely, it, it might not be a bad thing. If you're, if you're in a dorm, you know, it might not be a bad thing to say, hey, guys, I have this disease. You know, you might hear this going on. Uh, I can still do all the normal stuff you can. This is just what I have to do. And you know what, eventually it was fine. I lived in a fraternity house for two years. I hooked up my friends to my, my best, and I would turn it on high class. <laughs> you know, you can, have, you can use humor to diffuse, you know, emotional situations. And so, I, I, I think that every person has to have their own level of comfort and has to handle it their own way. And I think working together with your parents to come up with a plan together would be what I, what I would recommend. But also uh, staying on them as well. Because I mean, I, I, I hated it, but if they didn't do it, I don't know what else would have happened, honestly. Yeah. Yes. It's one of those things that every family just has to figure out. More questions? More questions? We got plenty of time, so don't be shy. I was curious, you said you were diagnosed when you were two. What was the life expectancy at that point? Five. Five. Right. So, and I was the first child, so my parents, you know, I feel like when they got married or whatever, I imagine these 22-year-old, 23-year-old parents, you know, being told that their daughter won't be doing and then I went to kindergarten and I was like, oh, well, you know, when I was 12, or 15, and like every once in a while, I'll still tease my dad and say, you thought you were going to get out of tuition. <laughs> 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 so, because, you know, that, like, 42 years ago, 
cff.org again. <laughs> no Google, it's cff.org.
truth at. Time for one more question. Anybody? Okay. And your gym teachers should allow that. And if they don't, please call us. <laughs> Go ahead. Just say I like it a lot, right? <laughs> Yeah, I paid a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you guys for uh, being on the spot up here.